Hi guys, welcome and I uh, hope your studies are going well and that you are challenged, but not too challenged, but you know, in that range of this is pushing me and I'm learning about leadership and I'm learning about motivating and organizations and all that good stuff. I just love this material. So hope you're having a good time with it too. All right. For those of you that are in the world of, look, I love all these dreams, but who's going to get it done? You know, and I love all this passion, but you know, who's going to actually do this? This is your day. You get your justice today because we're going to be talking about, if you've got your hand out, a thing called execution. In fact, the title of our talk is Ex Executing Well. And um, this is so, so important because, you know, basically a vision without execution is just another pipe dream. It just goes away. And, and, and for those of you who are kind of the more on the execution level, uh, honestly, I love you guys and you don't get the respect you need sometimes. It's sort of like, well, okay, Executive pastor will get this done. The ops lady will get this done. Uh, you know, they'll just work it all out. They'll find a plan or whatever. And it's so, 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 so much more important than just that. The executing person, or, or let's say the ex ex executing leader, has got this mandate done. Get it done, but not get it done. Get it done right. And some of you right now are going... Hallelujah, somebody finally gets me. My life has meaning. Um, you know, we live in a culture and a world today that's really all about passion. And I'm a, I love passion so much. You know, my passion to build the next app or the passion to do something um, in real estate or in medical supplies or a passion to do something in the art industry or a passion to do something in manufacturing. And you got to have that passion. You got to have the dream. And the, the Bible talks about when people don't have a, a, a dream or a vision, they're, you know, they perish inside. But if you don't have that, nothing happens. And we, we've got to kind of right that wrong a bit because a lot of times people say, well, I'm passionate about whatever. And I'll say, what have you done? They say, I haven't done anything. I just got a lot of passion. Well, yeah, but you're 42 and you got three kids. I know, I got a lot of passion. Well, that's a problem. Somebody, I think I just want to bring sexy back to execution. I mean, it's a great thing. And, and, and there's so much in the Bible about execution. I mean, be like the ant, you sluggard. Proverbs 6, and she, you know, she gets it all done. She transfers food for the harvest in the winter and all that. And, and then Jesus talking about building, on a, you're building your house on a foundation and not on sand. So many principles just say this is where the action is, just as much as vision and passion. So for those of you who are more on the passion and vision side, add this to your skill set. This is going to be part of your toolkit is, hey, I'm a visionary gal. I'm a visionary guy, but you know what else? I know how to get it done right, and everything will be good. Remember, at the Institute, we want you to be marketable. We want you to go out, start businesses, get in your family business, work for a corporation, work for a church or whatever, and we want you to be somebody they go, we are so lucky to have you. If you learn how to get it done right, everything's in good shape. So um, first off is our definition. And it's very simple. I want to make something that was kind of we could just chew on. It's the implementation of a course of action. In other words, to implement is to engage. That I am starting something. I am putting something into place. You know, I want to. Some people say it's time to imp implement uh, uh, my weight loss program. It's time to implement my parenting. It's time to imp implement my, my spiritual growth and getting a Bible study and find a good church. Implement just gets, means gets, get engaged and getting started. But then it says a course of action. And I use the word course because really, guys, nothing matters in an organization if there's not some kind of process. You can't get a great marketing scheme done in one day. You can't get a great team. You can't get um, a great front office or back office or metrics or anything unless it's a process. So it's a course. It's always a course. And that's why execution is important because a lot of times the dreamer will be kind of ADD. Squirrel! You know, and then something else grabs their attention and somebody's got to be there saying, we've got to monitor the process because the process is what has to happen. Execution is about that oven called organizations. Organizations aren't microwaves, they're ovens. And you want to, you know, you want to put out a good cake at the end of it or a good roast beef or whatever you want to say. And then I put the word action. And because this isn't about just thoughts and feelings and drawings and mind mapping. And it's all about behaviors. It's about getting things done. Right. So that's what it is. And that's how we do it. And, and you can be and, and the takeaways, you'll understand that and you'll come out with some really good skills for being to execute no matter what your situation or context. I'm making this very, very, very universal. So here's some, some of the key aspects you see in your handout. First off, 
is the, the issue of goals. Or I'm going to use for that KPIs, and if you've been in business for a while, that means uh, th that refers to key performance indicators. Key performance indicators means what are the ways we understand whether we're getting to the goal or not. And I'll give you some examples of that. Um, for, for the purposes of today's talk, I thought, okay, let's just say that the goal uh, or a K KPI for an organization, you know, I always like to use Acme Staples for some reason, is um, <clears throat> we want to have 15% uh, revenue growth. All right, we want to grow this year at a rate of 15%, which is very aggressive and very happy, and if you keep that up forever, you're way, way ahead of anybody else. Not many people do that. So it's 15% it's revenue growth. That is the goal, and, and, and that's what the KPI means. It's like bet, in between now and you know, a year from now, the key performance indicator says that, that if we hit that target, we have executed. We have gotten it done. We've gotten it done right. All of our people and our products and our systems and our operations and our culture and all that are working. We got it done. That's that 15%. Now, let me go into to, uh, to KPIs a little bit because it's, it's, um, it's very important to understand that there's different kinds of ways you understand KPIs. First off, you've got what are called lagging indicators. You see it on your handout, lagging indicators, and then you've got leading after that. What a lagging indicator is, is that they are output oriented. They're the big picture. That's what that 15% is that I mentioned. That big picture, the, you know, the big, huge, Monstrous 15%, that's the lagging in indicator. It's output-oriented, meaning that you see it, uh, it's about doing everything right, and that's the cake at the end of it. The 15% of it is, uh, the 15% revenue you go is the, is the cake. They are very easier to measure. You'll know if you have a good uh, budget person and if you're pretty good with numbers, you'll know we hit 15% or we hit 14 or 12 or 2 or we hit 20 or 30. Yes, it's a metric, and so it's easy to know by, you'll know by October or December if you're going to make it, right? So that's, that's what I mean by is output, out, out out, output oriented. But the, the negative thing about, about lagging indicators is they're hard to improve. I mean, think about it. You're getting to November and you think, we're not going to make our 15%. Our, our well, what do you do? Or, you know, maybe you're in February and you got till December. Well, the lag indicator said 15%, but, but how do we get there? See, it's a great for the vision and great to know where we're going, but it's output oriented. That's why the second part of this is input uh, is leading indicators, the word leading, which are different, and these you got to have both. I'll show you why you got to have both. You got to have leading and, and and output because leading are input oriented. What can we do today, right now? Call it kind of like um, what are a subcategory things that are smaller that contribute to that fifteen percent that make things go right? For example, um, let's suppose your leading indicators are every quarter Q one. Q2, Q3, Q4. Here's what we're going to do. We want to cut cost. And we want to cut cost by, I don't know, 5%. We're cutting back by 5%. Guess what? If you're cutting your cost every quarter by 5% um, from, from the norm from the year, all of a sudden, there you, you took taking 5% off the 15%. Now you're down to 10. See, you're, you're almost there. You're a third there. Also, we want to increase sales. That's another leading indicator. We want to increase our sales. We want to do a better job of the things, of the widgets, the staples we're selling. And we can do that. We can do something about that. So maybe, and, and I'm talking about the current products now. So we want to increase our sales of the current products, CP, by 5%. All right, so every quarter we've, stead we've, we've held, held steady that 5% cut in cost, one leading indicator. We've also increased our sales of the things we do have by 5% leading indicator. Now we're at 10%. Hey, we're two-thirds all the way there, and we know that the first quarter is looking good, the second quarter is looking good. How do we get to that third one? How do we get to 15%? Well, we're also going to have new product lines. Some smart person says, we've got to take our staples and make them, and we've got to put... Um, we got to put Google glasses on them so they can see better, and we got to paint them yellow because everybody likes yellow, and we got to make giant size ones. I'm just making stuff up, but new products, right? Everybody likes new products. So you got your new products, and you know what? We're expecting that new products are going to add 5%. Do the math here. We've cut our cost. We've added, we've added done well, better on our, our regular sales of what we already have. Got a new product, five times, five times three is 15, and if you hold steady to that, you're, you're 15% lagging indicator. The leading leads to the lagging. And this gives you something to do. They are, 
they are uh, uh, they're the change that happens before this, so you can do something about it, um, and they're easier to improve, right? So use both lagging and leading indicators as you as you begin to look at your organization or your division or your company or your church. Use these, and they will save your life. I'm such a big believer in the indicators. All right, now. How do you get this done? This is all good theory and a little bit of small level finances, but how do you do this um, in, your, in your organization? You see in your notes that you've got several, one, two, three, four, and I'm going to give you a fifth one, elements to this. And what I didn't put in your outline, you've got to put that up there. Sorry about that. Is first off, you've got to have a champion. Nothing happens without a champion. You ever been in a meeting? Everybody says, oh, we want to go do that. It's a fantastic initiative. We're going to have a youth thing, or we're going to do something on the web. And we're like, God, this is so great. We're, we, 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 all of us and these eight people, we, we, we. And you walk out, and then you come back the last week and say, the next week, how'd it go? And everybody says, oh, I didn't have time. Did you? No, I didn't have time. I didn't hear it. And then it's like, what? Guess what happened? There was no champion. By the time you lay out what the big picture is and how to get there, and if you don't know how to do this, Bring somebody in who's good at budgets and finances. If you don't, if your company's not large enough to get a CFO, get uh, then go to the next level and get a VP of, uh, of finance. If you don't have that, get a financial analyst. If you don't have that, get a get a bookkeeper, get a CPA, outsource it. But if you're not good at this, you don't have to be. You have to understand it. Every leader has to understand this. But if you're not good at this, get somebody to help you. But who's going to be the person who is going to own this? And you got to say, Susie. It's your job. You're the one who we, we're looking to you, and, and, and next week come back with, you know, who you want to get on this and who's in these different parts and all that, and that's Susie's job, and she's got to be the one. Because if, if everybody's accountable, I promise you, nobody's accountable. It's got to be a champion. All right, next part there, and you see in your outline, so again, sorry about the uh, not having the champion part in there. Add that in there. The next part is messaging. Now, what is Messaging. Messaging, it means basically get the word out and motivate. Messaging means to tell that Susie, now it's her job, to say, hey guys, it's 15%, here's how we're going to do it. You see these three categories of 5%, and I want you guys over here in marketing to help out here, and I want you people in manufacturing to do this, people, you guys in sales do this, whatever, and you get the word out how excited you are about it. That's why, and sometimes on the psychology level, sometimes a, a, uh, a get-it-done marketing person, I'm sorry, a get-it-done execution person is sort of more the steady eddy, and steady eddy sometimes think, oh, I'm not just really, I'm not the, you know, the hysterical, you know, set your hair on fire, you got to do that a bit. Even if you're steady Eddie, you got to stretch yourself a bit as a leader and say, we're really excited about this. We think by next year we're going to be a totally different place. You guys are going to be participating in all this. You're participating in the fruits of this, and so it's a big deal. And I want to put out you know, everything people message. I believe, in, I believe in those posters you put you know, on the walls and next to the bathroom. And I believe in those videos that you put up that say, Bill you know, exceeded the, leading in, the lagging indicator. Wait a minute. Bill, see the leading indicator, sorry. And uh, way to go, Bill. And he gets, you know, a Starbucks card or a dinner out. And I believe in having meetings about it. And when you start the meeting, okay, we're going to have our, our Monday quarterback meeting. Talk about the lag indicators, 15%. What's going to make it happen? And the people repeat it. And you, you just do stuff like this. It's where HR comes in. It's where uh, really good CEOs come in and, who say, we're going to talk about this. Uh, Patrick Lencioni who, as you know, is a great guy, and we, we, we love each other's stuff. Um, he says you've got to over-communicate it in his book, the, the, the message. I'm sorry, the advantage. The message is the, the thing you do. In the advantage, he says, you've got to over-communicate it. So that's your job is kind of be the, we're getting the word out about this. You don't just kind of do it and say, well, only my top team knows it. Everybody from the top person to the part-time person who's on minimum wage, if they get it, they get it. The third thing about execution is now there's got to be somebody in the monitoring level. And what is monitoring? Well, what the word has the word the, the meaning of the word monitoring has to do with to check the process. Now, this is where this is actually a character piece. You know, the institute's based on competency and character. Everybody wants to be competent. It takes character to say, I've got to check on this once a week. I've got to ask for the numbers. I've got to go to the people and say, how can I support you? How can I resource you? How's it going? I've seen so many companies kind of say, we've got the plan in place and nobody monitors. They're all busy putting out fires somewhere else and they're all doing something else. And I'm telling you, 
if there's anything I've got here that's the biggest deal, you got to have somebody monitoring. Well, that's going to be Susie, your champion, but you got to help Susie do it too. Susie, how's the monitoring going? Well, I've been really busy. Well, this is your top priority. How can I take some things off the bottom of your priorities to give you time for this? Because things break down when it's not monitoring. Uh, some, you know, in some complicated organizations, it's not daily. It's like by the minute. You know, people like Apple and, and Google and Facebook are monitoring you know, by the nanosecond. In smaller organizations, maybe it's every week. Uh, I wouldn't say, I don't think you can go less than a week with anywhere without monitoring. You, you, God left those seven days to, for some meaning here. So, um, but somebody's got to check the progress in all of those ways. You know, how's the sales going? How's the new product development going? Is it, on, is it on the market yet? Um, how's it going with our cutting costs? Is there some way we can prune back? The next piece is meeting. And what does meeting mean? Meeting means you've got to get people in a room. I don't mean a literal room. You know, I'm really big on video conferences. They're so convenient. And now that the resolution's good and the audio's good and don't take, you know, I, I remember in the early days, if you had a 90-minute meeting, 30 of it was taken up with, oh, I don't know, I've got the wrong plug in here. Where's the HDMI? Who's got this? Now it's much better. Well, if you get everybody in a room, virtual or otherwise, what happens is you get energy. So have meetings about this execution. Uh, don't just kind of check on the, my point is, don't check on the people individually. You, whoever the, the champion is that's owning this, the champion's got to be saying, okay, team, um, the big picture, maybe it's the executive team, maybe it's just the owner and a couple of people. So how are we doing the plan? That's what begins to change everything. And then after meeting is response to results. What do I mean by response to results? This is what, what's called fine tuning or adjustments. You see, no plan ever makes it. I don't know anybody that can say, oh, we did everything right in January and it happened in December. You know, organizations are in wars, whether you're a for-profit or you're a non-profit or you're an NGO or whatever. Organizations are in a war. There's a great statement um, I read, I read like, you know, a lot of leadership literature is about in the military because so much goes on there. And there's a great statement that says, no plan, no plan of battle ever survived the first skirmish. You know, you can go in there and think we're going to put our people here and our, you know, put our, our infantry here and our air here, whatever. But after the first skirmish, everybody's got to, got to, you got to fine tune, you got to adjust because things happen. Now, the bad guy is not the other guy, but the bad guy is his life, you know, economic things and competition and your people, that sort of thing. So, don't be rigid and say, it's got to be right on target. You go, okay, we didn't do good on this new product. The new product sort of like sucked. So what do we do? Let's fine tune it. What's a better new product? Or our current products are just not getting there. Okay, are the salespeople not resourced? Are the wrong salespeople? Do we not have their pitch right? So always fine tune. Use those weekly meetings to continue fine tuning because you're going to make it better and better and better and better. So what's the wrap up there? The wrap up is basically this. Vision plus execution wins, always wins. Do you have to be both? No, not many people are experts at both. Some people are way better at one than the other. But I'm telling you, A, you've got to know, understand both, and have people around that do both. And B, if you don't do it, you've got to have somebody else can do it, somebody with you. So if you just know, I'm not good at execution, I get distracted easily, I'm a 30,000 person, find that person. It might be a friend of yours or a colleague or somebody outsourced, but you've got to have that person. If you're good here, get this person. All right? And there's a great book I want you to read. Uh, I know you're reading too much, but it's just a wonderful book. Um, it's called The Four Disciplines of Execution by McChesney, Covey, and Hewling. I think I have it on your notes, right? Yeah. Um, this, this is the Covey that's um, Steve Covey, this, the, you know, the fantastic guy that... Um, they wrote about the seven habits. Well, he, he and his colleagues wrote a great book called Execution. And they've got a lot of great explanations of leading and lagging indicators in there. But they just make it simple. You can take those principles, and we just had a little short didactic on that. But to go into depth, they've written, I think, the best thing out there that's practical and it works and it gets things going. So um, be like the ant. Have the vision, but keep carrying those things. And, and try to stay away from ADD, and I would say tactical mentalities. I think you might have heard another didactic. I talk about that tactic is the field ops, the strategy is the big picture you're doing. 
Stay with the big picture. Every new idea, every new shiny idea, every new tactic, it must submit itself to the strategy. Good executors keep going, okay, I got the plan here and I'm monitoring, is it tied into the strategy? And somebody goes, well, try this. You know, go to Venezuela and do this. Well, does it fit the strategy? Maybe not. So stick with this. Vision plus execution will get you and your organization where you want to go, and you will be a wonderful, wonderful benefit and greatly desired and appreciated asset to your company. All right? So I hope that was helpful, and hope it works.